During 2012 and 2013, we've concentrated on the theme, What Have You Created? So this evening, I want to take the privilege of answering that question for myself. My adventure in radio and television started when I was just about eight years old. I grew up in the Appalachian Mountains. And on the next hill over from us, about a mile away, was a broadcast tower for an AM radio station. And at night, when I was supposed to be asleep in my jammies, I would look out the window with my chin resting on the windowsill, and I'd watch that glowing red beacon light that flashed very softly off into the distance. But that light was so powerful that it could penetrate any fog. I was absolutely fascinated by radio and television. The very idea that one person could talk to all of these other people and make it personal to them, even as a child, I thought that was absolutely incredible. Now, during the daytime, what I would do is walk the mile through the woods, and, and I'd go over to that radio station on the next hill, and I would stand there all day long outside the big plate glass window. And on the other side was the disc jockey. And I'd just look in that window all day. <laughs> they'd get tired of that, so they'd invite me in, and I'd get to sit there and watch what they were doing. And a lot of times what I would do is crawl into the dumpster to retrieve the records that they would throw away. And then I would lay awake for hours and hours and hours with a transistor radio that I would strategically place under my pillow and just listen to these distant radio stations from all over the eastern part of the United States. My mother said, stop doing that. You're too tired for school, but I wouldn't quit. And then in junior high school, I saved up enough money from delivering newspapers that I bought myself a shortwave radio. And I would sit there till 4 o'clock in the morning tuning to radio broadcasts from Tokyo and Moscow and London and everywhere else in the world that you could imagine. And then in high school, I won a speech contest. And during the taping of that speech, which was at a local radio station, I used that opportunity to talk my way into a job as a disc jockey. So after school and then on weekends, I had my own show. And then when I went to college, I worked at two different radio stations. And I worked in television and I produced a very bad movie. <laughs> and then later I got a master's degree in broadcast management and I continued to work and manage radio stations in several states. And at the same time, I was teaching in college. And then I made my way to the University of Akron. I came here to Akron 35 years ago. Now WAUP, our call letters at that time, was a very small FM radio station its signal just barely covered most of Summit County. It had been neglected financially. But you know, I kept thinking to myself, this thing has potential. There's possibilities. We can make something out of it. We didn't have any money. So what I did was to help to raise $2 million. And every penny went back into our operation. And then we increased the coverage area over and over and over again with all of our construction permits so that now the signal covers all of northeastern Ohio and now through web broadcasting you can hear us anywhere in the world. You know we didn't have very many listeners so I helped to create a format that would propel WZIP to become the most listened to student operated radio station in the United States. I wanted our students to have more television experience so a dozen years ago, Dr. Hoffman and I decided it was time to create what we know today as ZTV. You know, over time, things add up. With the help of our students and staff during the past 35 years that I've been responsible for the station, that has included over 300,000 hours of continuous broadcasting over two and a half million times that we played songs on the air, 10,000 hours of informational programming, thousands of news and sports and public affairs reports. 
Do you realize that we broadcast more than 225,000 public service announcements live? You know, during that 35-year period, WZIP was tuned to by the public all together for, for a collective listenership of over 400 million hours. That's a lot. Now, these successes were due to the contributions of more than 5,000 students who've been in our program during these last 35 years, and then to our staff members who have worked with us over all these years. And I want us to remember who these people were, Susan Witten and Cindy Carter and Janine Gravesmill and Terry Fosnott and Jackie Swanson and our engineer, Richard McGraw, and our chief engineer, Blake Thompson, and ZTV general manager, Phil Hoffman. What did all of this hard work and dedication by these incredible people accomplish for us? Well, you know, our students receive excellent training and opportunities that they otherwise wouldn't have had, and they get jobs. ZTV wins top national awards every single year. And in 2012, WZIP achieved its highest ratings in our 50-year history. And then in 2013, this year, just two weeks ago, WZIP was recognized by the Broadcast Education Association as being the signature radio station in the United States. You know, WZIP and ZTV are also important components in the life of the greater Akron community. We've been influencing generations with our programs for a long, long time. And we also influence people on an individual basis, too. You know, a couple years ago, one of our disc jockeys came into my office and he said, I just received a really unusual call, Mr. Beck. He said he had just finished reading one of our PSAs, one of our community announcements, and it was about the suicide prevention hotline. And then a caller telephoned and said, I want to thank you for that announcement. The caller explained that just a few months before, he had decided to take his own life because he was so depressed and so despondent. But he kept hearing our WZIP message about the suicide prevention. And he called the hotline, and then he got help. He was at the point that he called telling us that he was in counseling. And finally, he saw some hope and some reason to live. I want you to think about that. Because of your efforts, that man is alive today. And because of your example and your on-air invitation, students decided to attend the University of Akron. And because of your hard work and dedication, entire generations in the greater Akron area have been entertained and informed and motivated by ZTV and by WZIP. And I am proud of these accomplishments, but I do not take credit for this alone. It's something that we have accomplished together. One of my favorite quotes is included on the back cover of our banquet program. And we've discussed this several times during our staff meetings. It's called The Man in the Arena. And it's from a speech that was presented by President Theodore Roosevelt. You know, I have been that man in the arena every minute of every day for the last 35 years. And there does come a time when leadership changes. And we have now come to that time at WZIP. This evening, I'm announcing that I will be ending my assignment as general manager of WZIP. I plan to retire from the University of Akron on June 30th of this year. That's about 70 days from now. Now, I'm sure that people are going to say to me, so what are you going to do? What are you planning on doing? Already, I can tell you, I have another job. My last day at the University of Akron is going to be June 30th, and then I start a new job on July 1st. Dan, Megan, would you stand up? Here you're going to meet my youngest son, Dan Beck, and my daughter-in-law, Megan Beck. 
They are both former students here at the University of Akron, and they are two of my business partners. Dan recently created a new business in Canton, and Dan and Megan and I, along with two other partners, are part of a new company called Beck and Mahalik. And I'll be serving as the director of sales and marketing for this business. And you know what, Dan? We're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> that is the plan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for standing up. You know, as I leave my position as general manager of WZIPFM, I'll be ending 46 years of broadcasting. So I have a wish for you. I hope that at some time in your life, you will see that glowing light in the distance, much as I did when I was just eight years old, that calls you to your destiny, whether it's in broadcasting or some other area. And I hope it will lead you to the career that you will truly love the way I have loved this one. For the past 35 years, when I've presented our banquet speech, I've concluded with the same remarks, and so I present them to you for this one last time. Don't ever forget what's important in broadcasting. It is not the equipment or the computers or the studios. A camera is lifeless. It just sits there until somebody picks it up. A microphone, it's just metal and wires until somebody speaks into it. The very soul of our business consists of good people who breathe life into a broadcasting station. I hope that you will share in that great privilege that I've enjoyed during these past 35 years that you will always work with wonderful people. You are what makes ZTV and WZIP, the great 88, great. Thank you for an incredible 35 years.